Uh, hello, welcome everyone uh, to this webinar uh, on SAP Customer Checkout. Uh, my name is Richie Gawkin. Uh, I'm a technical consultant with Milner Brown. Uh, so b before we get started, I'm just briefly going to cover who we are at Milner Brown. So we are an SAP Gold Partner who focus primarily on SAP Business One. We support uh, over 25% of all uh, of the SAP Business One customers in the UK uh, and Ireland. Uh, we have implemented business solutions for over 400 organisations. Uh, so wh whether it's industries from manufacturing, retail, wholesale and distribution, uh, or services, uh, whatever the industry, we have been there, we've solved the problem, and we've implemented the solution. Uh, we, ha we have, as a business, we've received a number of awards, uh, both uh, externally uh, from, from outside companies. For example, last year we won the Deloitte Best Managed Business in Ireland Award. Uh, we, we also have received a number of awards from SAP themselves, such as the fastest growing partner, the most new customers, the most new SAP HANA implementations, but probably the one that we're most proud of uh, as a business is the most satisfied customer award. Uh, we, we like to think that we do a good job, but we are certainly very proud when you, the customer, tell us. Uh, that we are doing a good job. Uh, on the flip side of that, of course, if there's something that we aren't getting quite right for you, we're more than happy to take that feedback uh, and work towards uh, doing a better job there. Uh, finally, just about Milner Brown, we are proud to call ourselves innovators. So while we implement SAP Business One Solution, we have made some innovations over the years to enhance the product. First of all, we, we have a, a suite uh, of enhancements to Business One uh, called B1 Apps. So B1 Apps solves many industry-specific problems that necessarily Business One won't do out of the box. So whether, whether you have uh, an additional need in manufacturing or wholesale and distribution or in the services industry, we have a B1 app that uh, will fill, fill that gap. In addition to that, we have a new range of products um, which are branded at Enterprise. Uh, so the, these fall into two categories. Uh, we, we have an analytics suite uh, and a portal suite which will allow you to interact with Business One but outside of Business One. Uh, and we also have a range of mobile apps, which will bring the power of Business One to your mobile. So you can have full in insight as to what is going on in your business at all times. Okay, so with regard to SAP Customer Checkout. Uh, so before we actually get in and have a look at the software itself, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, a bit brief overview of what is required to run SAP Customer Checkout. Uh, SAP Customer Checkout is not a, a complex solution in terms of implementation. The product itself is very easy to implement, doesn't require a huge effort, uh, and the, the rollout can be very, very simple. We will cover the, the the actual functions of the software itself. We'll go through and have a, a look at how to process some transactions, uh, some payments, and exactly what you can do with the software. Uh, and as we go through that, we'll be able to go and see firsthand what the, the benefits of the solution are. But the key benefits that, that we would have is if, if currently, for example, you, you already have uh, a point of sale system in place, uh, and whether or not you're, you're using Business One already, or whether you're thinking of becoming a Business One um, customer, really bringing the two areas of ERP and uh, your checkout operation together uh, is going to allow you to see everything in real time. So you're going to be able to analyze your sales up to the minute, 
you're going to be able to have complete visibility over what your stock position is. Uh, if you're ready to go through a purchasing cycle, you're not waiting until the end of the day where somebody's manually uh, inputting all of the transaction data from your EPOS system into your ERP system. This is all happening in real time and is fully integrated. Okay. Uh, so, um, what is required to, to run SAP customer checkout? So, there, there's four different components uh, that we would consider implementing for you in, in your solution and depending on exactly what your business scenario is, would dictate which, which ones of these would be relevant to you. So, first, First and foremost uh, is the checkout application itself. So it's, it's designed uh, to run, uh, really well designed to run on a touchscreen EPOS system. So obviously there has to be some hardware for the machine to run on. Uh, and as, as you can see from this, this uh, image here, um, the, the system does fully integrate with displays where, where there is uh, not only the main display for the checkout, but additional displays, displays perhaps that will tell the customer uh, what price they need to pay, some other sales message that you would like to appear on there. Uh, also, we have full integration with receipt printing, uh, with uh, cash drawer control, so opening and closing that. Uh, and finally, as well, full integration with uh, a credit card terminal. Um, so, if you have a, a system whereby you're processing all of your sales transactions, then in a separate uh, card terminal, then rekeying uh, the amount of the transaction and processing that separately from your EPOS system, what SAP Customer Checkout can do is bring that all together. <coughs> so, you would simply process the transaction as normal, then you would uh, send the transaction to the card terminal, the amounts would go to the card terminal, the customer inserts their card, puts in their PIN and it returns back to customer checkout saying whether or not it was successful. Uh, in the background of that, we obviously need the ERP system. So at Milner Brown, we only deal with SAP Business One. Uh, SAP customer does uh, link into other SAP ERP systems, but this will be the one that we're focusing on uh, today. <coughs> Another uh, optional component of SAP Customer Checkout is the, ke the Checkout Monitor. So while this is optional, we would certainly recommend that as part of any solution that the Checkout Monitor was installed and was enabled. Uh, the, the function that this, this provides is as transactions are occurring on the SAP customer checkout, these are then synchronizing back into the ERP system. So for example, if, if you had some problem whereby, let's say, um, uh, an item that you were selling, some, someone made inactive in the main ERP system, then there would be a problem when the, the transaction occurs in the ERP system. It would simply have an error. Um, so what Checkout Monitor does is it looks at all these transactions and it checks for which ones have failed so that you could make sure that the integration between your ERP system and your EPOS system is always correct at all times. Uh, the final component, again, which is optional and whether or not you would need this, again, would, would depend on the, your type of business and the way you would like to roll out customer checkout, uh, is the checkout server. So what this does is, is this allows uh, things like your users uh, to be synchronized across not only one instance of customer checkout, but several instances. So for example, if you, if you had a retail store, where you maybe had three or four uh, checkouts and you wanted your uh, employees to be able to log in and out of any of these checkouts, checkout server would certainly be um, a, a good option for. Uh, similarly as well, when, when we look to uh, deal with vouchers or gift cards or the, that type of thing, we would uh, 
certainly recommend that you would um, uh, install Checkout Server in that case. What this would allow you to do is issue um, a gift card from one checkout, but be able to use that gift card uh, at any one of your checkouts within your organization. Okay, so uh, I, I think uh, now we should get in and have a look at the actual checkout software uh, itself. Okay, so here we are uh, at the user screen uh, and I'm being asked to uh, enter my details here. So there are a, a number of ways that we can do this. We can, uh, if, if we had a keyboard installed as, as part of the EPOS system, we could simply type in the details there. Uh, we can use this new keypad below here, so I'm, I'm going to choose uh, that option. Uh, and finally, the, the other way of logging in is by um, a barcoded ID card. Um, so we can use any one of these, these methods to go and uh, log into the system. Okay, so I press the login button and I'm presented with the main sales uh, customer checkout screen. Okay. Um, so there's, I'm going to run through each of these uh, areas, describe what everything does here. Uh, so really the, the first part that we would need to go and look at is uh, the, the item selector. So naturally in any EPOS system, we are, we are scanning barcodes. Uh, of products, so we can we can do that. Um, if I, for example, uh, I'll type this in. I don't have a, a barcode scanner here. Type in this barcode. Uh, it finds the relevant product for me uh, and brings it up as as part of the sale. Uh, if the barcode didn't scan, perhaps it was damaged. I can simply go and click on the search icon here, and I can look through and say, ah, okay, this is the this is the product here that I'm looking for. I select that one uh, and it's added to the cell. Uh, if I, I had a, a large suite of products and I, I wanted to go and search for the product that I'm interested in, we ha or perhaps it doesn't have a barcode, uh, we can do that here in the search box. So if I type in rainbow, for example, click on search, I can see there uh, all the rainbow products and I can go and select the relevant one that's for me. Uh, we also have an advanced search as well. So this, le this lets you go and search on specific characteristics of the product. Um, I can choose description here. I can, for example, go and type in this barcode, one, two, three, four, five, click on search, and in the results, it will give me a list of all of the products which meet this criteria. So it's, it's very easy to find products, uh, whether you're using a barcode scanning solution or whether for your particular business this is not uh, relevant to you, in which case you could be easily searching for items which come from your ERP system and are synchronized with the customer checkout simply by either using the basic search or by using the advanced search. Okay. Uh, one good feature we have as well, uh, as you can see for this uh, item here, A00001, a JB Office Print 1420, uh, we have this one set up so that we can actually see the image of the product, uh, which can be quite useful for the, uh, from a number of perspectives. Um, no, number one is something being incorrectly labeled, uh, especially with high ticket value items. Uh, we would certainly want to avoid a situation where you're selling uh, something which costs £300, for, uh, but it's been labelled up as something which costs £100. Certainly a, a quick and easy way to lose lots of revenue. Uh, but by having this image uh, in here, that could simply act as a warning to the salesperson to say, okay, the thing I'm selling here or the thing I'm scanning doesn't necessarily match up with the image I have for it on the system. Uh, and, and secondly, from a security perspective, it's, it's not unheard of uh, in a retail environment to have um, someone perhaps switch the labels uh, and try to obtain uh, a, a discount uh, of their own making um, and perhaps put a, a tag on for a, 
an item that's of lesser value. So again, from a security perspective, it just acts as, a, as another guide uh, to the salesperson to say, okay, does this match up with what I'm selling? Okay, um, so that's, that's the uh, item list. Just going to cancel this one off here. We'll have a similar scenario with uh, business partners. So in, in this scenario, by default, the way that customer checkout works is we have one particular business partner set up almost as a default business partner. So this would be useful in the case where all of your sales are to, to customers. You don't necessarily know whether they're uh, repeat customers. They, they certainly don't have an account with you as such. Uh, they just come into your store. Store, they buy goods and, and then they leave. So we would, what we would do in this case is we would set up one generic business partner, in this case called direct sale, uh, and all of the transactions that happen in the store would go through this one business partner. But if you were, let's, let's say in another scenario where perhaps you had a trade counter, uh, perhaps you're a builder's merchant and you, know, you have particular accounts that you have set up with the people that you trade with as well as dealing with the retail customer. So we can, we can actually process transactions and tie them specifically up with a customer's account. So the way we, we would do this is we would either simply type in their account code. Uh, if we don't have that to hand, we can go and search for them in pretty much the same way that we just searched for the items. So we can search for them by name, and again, if we wanted to do an advanced search, for example, we could go and search for them by, by postcode, uh, for example. So if I type into the postcode box here, um, um, 37FD, this will uh, return to me a list of all the customers that I have with that postcode, uh, and in this case, there's only one, uh, and it's this customer. So to select them, I would simply double click on there, and now this sale re relates directly to this customer. It also tells me uh, the price list that is relevant to this customer. So for those of you who are, are new to Business One, perhaps you don't have it implemented yet, you're thinking about having it implemented, um, we, we have the ability in Business One to set up multiple price lists and have those price lists tied in with a relevant customer. In addition to that, we can also give uh, discounts by default. So this is setting up in advance. We can say, okay, for this customer, they will always receive a, a discount from us of, of a certain amount. The customer may receive a discount across various different item groups. They may receive a discount on very specific items, so only items X, Y, and Z. Uh, we, we may also set up discounts over different periods of time based upon different quantity breaks. There's, uh, there, there's a lot that we can do in terms of giving discounts in SAP Business One. So the key, the key point is that these prices are synchronized with the SAP customer checkout. So we're really avoiding a case where you, know, you, you have a, a special trade customer, they come in, they have prices already agreed, uh, SAP customer checkout will recognize that it will give the appropriate discounts to, to your specific customer uh, and take care of all of that. So there's no looking up what the, the specific terms are. It's all done. It's all integrated within the system uh, and taken care of. In addition to that, what we can do is we can give ad hoc discounts within the SAP customer checkout itself. So uh, if, I, if I go and choose uh, another product here, uh, let's have uh, some of that, this, this one. So we can see the, the, the price for this customer has come up as uh, $293.75, uh, but I would like to give them a 10% discount. And what the system will do is it will go and calculate the new price. Oh, sorry, that, that, this is um, a fixed amount. So the, in, in this case, we're given a fixed amount uh, discount of £10, and we're asked to specify a reason uh, why, why we're given this discount. So in this case, we could say it's, it's goodwill, but it could be any reason, and these are, these are definable by you, whichever reasons you would like to use to record against why discounts have been given. Okay, 
So that will that will go and calculate uh, the discount. It will calculate the relevant percentage and and give us the end price. What we can do also as well, which I, I tried to do a moment ago, is give a discount by percentage as well. So we can simply by clicking on the discount percentage box, if I want to give a 10% discount, uh, it will go and calculate the new gross amount for me. Again, I need to go and choose uh, choose a, a reason uh, why I'm giving this discount, uh, and then I can go OK, and that will go and apply the discounts uh, in here for me. So there's there's a lot of flexibility in what we can do with, within the ERP system itself, uh, and what we can do within customer checkout also. Okay, and another feature that we we'll have in customer checkout is the ability to amend descriptions. Um, so what's happening here is this product A double zero double zero five has the description from the ERP system rainbow color jet seven point five. Uh, for so, some reason, whether or not this would apply to to your business directly, the ability is there. We have the ability to go and change uh, the description to suit whatever your customer would like to see it on on the receipt. So uh, there's also could be a business requirement around this as well, and um, which which would be. If, let, let's say, for example, we, we, we had this and we wanted to say, okay, this is an X display product, we can uh, we can go and enter that in here. So that now becomes part of, of the transaction as well. Um, and you know the, the, this could be perhaps the reason that we're giving the discount on this item. So th this would let you record whether or not something was an X display item and justify whether the discount one was given, which certainly for traceability purposes uh, could be an advantage. Uh, for your particular business. Uh, okay, so as well as uh, discounts on the individual line items, we can also give a discount uh, across the whole order. So uh, in, in this case, it, it works very, very similarly to the way that discounts work on a line basis, um, except it applies to everything. So if I was to give a 20% discount on uh, or twenty pounds discount rather on the whole order, uh, it was going to reduce it by that certain amount, and I would go and record the reason that I was doing it yet again. Uh, the percentage just worked out. If I wanted to, I could do it by percentage as well and say, okay, I'll go give a five percent discount there, and then you, the new gross amount is worked out. So we can give discounts at line level. We can give uh, discounts at uh, the order level. And we can go and take care of you know any any one of these scenarios uh, and record everything that's going on. It's important to note though, uh, and this is probably a good time to to speak about the different permissions. But not we could only um, we can control who can give discounts and who cannot give discounts. Okay, so in SAP customer checkout, um, I'm. I'm logged in here as the administrator and have full access to all aspects of customer checkout. Um, but there are 19 different configurable permissions, uh, user permissions within SAP customer checkout. Uh, so these the, these are things like, as I, as I mentioned, with the ability uh, as to whether you can give a discount or a a percent discount or not, whether you can do things like open the cash drawer without a transaction occurring, um, whether you can process returns, um, whether you can do do things like actually just go in and change the unit price, which which I'm able to do here because uh, I'm the administrator, or whether you need to stick to the one that's set up in the system, uh, and whether or not you're able to go and uh, execute the caching up procedures and record the fact of whether additional cash uh, has came in and out of the till, uh, perhaps to go in the safe or into a separate cash drawer. Uh, all of these things and more are, are configurable uh, on a user level. Okay, um, so as we, as we go down, uh, look past the, the, the totals that we have, which are simply a, a, a sum of the, the items that we've sold already. Uh, we have a, a, an additional few buttons down here. 
So this, this button here is just a static button that we can use to go and apply a, a fixed discount amount, again depending on the permissions that we would have uh, for this specific user. So if I were to click on that, it applies a 10% discount to the order. Okay. Um, this, this one relates to returns, which we'll, we'll come on to in a moment. Uh, and again, if you're, if you're already familiar with SAP Business One, uh, you will know that in any, any sales transaction in the system, whether it's a sales order or through to an invoice, you can specify a, a salesperson for that particular order. So if, you, if you're working in an environment where your uh, commissions are important to you and tracking who has sold what, uh, and applying commissions based upon their sales, this is going to be a really important feature for you. So to, to choose a salesperson, I have this one defaulting to me, um, but I can go and choose a different salesperson in this case, uh, should, should someone else have made that sale. Um, click on OK and the, the salesperson gets updated with who I've just selected. So the key is this information again synchronizes back into SAP Business One once the, the transaction is complete. Okay, um, so we, we have the sale here now. Um, now we need to go and finish the transaction. Uh, in other words, we, we either need to take payment for this or we need to go and uh, put it on the customer's account. Uh, so let's start with a, with a very simple scenario. We'll, we'll just take payment for this one. Okay, so if I click on this button here, this will uh, ask, th th this is a payment and it's a payment in cash. Uh, the most ideal situation that we can ever have is the customer has the exact correct amount of change, uh, in which case we can say, okay, and finish. It will go and process the, oh, I seem to have, Yep, he's, he seems to have paid a lot more money than what he was due there and is due a lot of change, so uh, let, let's ignore that. Um, I also have um, set up here an emulator, which uh, emulates two things, the receipt printing capability, but also the, the cash drawer uh, capability. So this is, this is representing that the cash drawer is open uh, and the receipt has been printed. So if we, we go and have a look at this receipt here. Uh, we can see that we sold uh, two products, uh, both of them are the same, except one of them has X display uh, in there. We can see the discount information that we put into the customer checkouts. We can see the total amount, uh, the total amount of cash that was given, which uh, apologies, that was a key type of error from me, and the amount of change that we've given out uh, of the cash draw. Okay, so once that's, that's printed off, we give the receipt to the customer, we would then go and close the cash drawer, uh, and then we would be ready to proceed with our next sale. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to go and do that, and let's look at a, a few different methods of, of paying. Um, so I'm going to select another item. I'm going to put in the barcode this time, 12345. Now, um, I have and set up in my database this product relating, this barcode rather, relating to more than one item. Uh, in that case, if, if that ever applied to your business, what would the, the system would do, would say, okay, this, this is, relates to more than one item, choose which one it is that you're actually selling. Okay, and so, so I'm, I'm going to say in this case, it's uh, this top one here. Okay, uh, how many of them is it we are selling? Uh, well, I can say that it's, uh, it's three. There's no need to scan three individually. I have full control over what quantity I would like to sell, which again uh, should be in the system. Uh, okay, so we have, a, we have a total for this one now. Uh, again, we're going to go and choose, uh, we're going to go and choose cash, and if I enter 400, it's going to show me that there's an additional balance um, owe to the customer here of 39.98. Uh, now I have uh, options here, so as you, as you saw the last time I can go, uh, I can press OK uh, and I can go and give the customer their change, the message that would, uh, that would go and appear uh, through the process as normal. I've also got other options as well to pay out using different methods. So if I click on pay out by, 
uh, I'm presented with a, with a list of options, which are uh, options that I've, that I've set up. Uh, so here I, I've set up voucher. I can I can go and issue a voucher to the customer for for that particular amount. Um, I, I can issue gift cards, but the key the key point in uh, SAP customer checkout is it is actually a true multi currency checkout solution. So I could be I could be operating with both selling uh, and issuing payments in as many different currencies as, as I would like. Uh, so if you work in an environment which some of the, the larger retail stores have been, been adopting where you want to sell something both in euros and in sterling, you, you can absolutely do that in customer checkout. Uh, what you can also do is manage cash um, for, for two currencies, or more, more than two currencies, as many as you would like in, in customer checkout as well. Um, so. It would be quite a strange situation in here, but you know, should the customer wishes change to be issued in euros, I can simply go down uh, and, and select that and go and you know uh, issue the change out in euros. Um, the key here is we we can be choosing the, the exchange rate that's actually used uh, to go and decide how, how many euros we would like to go and. Uh, issue to this customer. So I, I would guess nine times out of ten you would be choosing a rate that was favourable to you to give the customer the additional convenience of being able to pay in more than one currency. Okay, uh, so I'm just going to come out with that and, and cancel that for a moment. Um, if the customer says, okay, at this point uh, I actually wouldn't like to pay you, £400 cash, uh, although you've already keyed it in, it's simply a case of saying, right, let's let's go and cancel that there. So for the moment, the that payment method has been cancelled, say, right, okay, I would rather pay you on my credit card. Okay, excellent, no problem at all. So we click on the credit card icon there, uh, we can choose which type of uh, card has been used to pay or, or is it going to the card machine. Uh, so we can select that uh, and we can click on OK and finish. Now I don't have a, a credit card emulator or anything like that set up in this solution, but what would be happening at this point is SAP customer checkout would interact with the card terminal. It would be sending to it 360 pounds and two pence uh, of a value, and all of the validation, the dialing up the bank, and everything else like that would be handled by the credit card processing terminal itself. Uh, when that card terminal responds back to SAP customer checkout saying everything has been successful, we would then proceed on to the screen where the sale the sale happens. Uh, it goes through the, the cash drawer would open so that you can take your copy of receipt and, uh, of the receipt and store that, uh, and it would ask you to close the drawer to continue. Uh, so that's that's uh, I'll click on here now uh, to close the drawer, and we can go and get on to the next sale. Uh, what we can also do, I'll bring up another uh, <coughs> item here, we could also accept uh, payments of more than one method. So here we have a sale that's happened for uh, £300. The customer says, right, I'd like to pay half cash and, and half card. We can absolutely do that as well. So we say key in £150 uh, for cash and click on OK and then we can process the remainder. So the system already recognises what the balance on the, the order is, and we can we can then go and process the, the remainder of that by card. And again, click on OK. We could see the balance there is zero, uh, and we would simply click on OK to go and process that sale, add it into business one, uh, and now we're ready for our next customer. OK. Um, so. One uh, other payment method, since we could be dealing with trade counter scenarios, regular customers, really anyone that you would like to note uh, within the customer checkout solution itself, um, we can put payments uh, or we can use payment terms with these customers. So essentially, sales that are on credit. Okay. So again, let's go and choose another item. Uh, this time we'll, we'll have this one and. Let's put another one on here as well. So we'll have these these two items, uh, £675. Let's go and find our, uh, our customer now. So again, 
they don't know what their account number is. We couldn't find it by using their name. Perhaps the, the spelling was slightly awkward, so we'll type in the, the postcode again, M73FD. Let's try that again. Okay. So we'll find out find our one customer here. We'll choose them as the customer. So because this is a, a payment on account, we go to this last payment method that we have here. Uh, so we're presented with a slightly different screen here. Uh, we can be going and then we, we can have a default uh, payment method for this customer, uh, or we can simply go and choose one of the existing ones that's been uh, set up in the system. So in this case, I'm setting the, the, the 14 days, and we could put some notes around this. OK. We can click on OK and finish. And again, there's no change due because it's a payment on the customer's account. OK. And we'll close our cash drawer. Excellent. OK, so as I'm processing all of these sales <coughs> and the corresponding payment, what's actually happening is um, these are being posted directly into Business One. So uh, an invoice is being created in the background and a corresponding payment, and the two are, the two are being uh, reconciled so that there's no open items left in the system. Um, but what this is, <coughs> what this is doing is allowing you the complete visibility over what's going on uh, sales-wise and with your stock position as well. So that should should you need to order or should you just want some insight into exactly what's going on in your business uh, through all of your stores, if you have multiple stores, uh, through all of your individual checkouts, you, you can completely have uh, total insight as to what's going on there. Uh, <clears throat> one other uh, area that SAP customer checkout handles really well is the ability to issue vouchers and, and gift cards and, uh, and that type of thing. Um, so in, in order to do that, let, let's say for example, let's, uh, customer comes comes to us and says, do you, do you offer gift cards? Um, we can say, yes, absolutely, we do. Uh, we would, oops. Okay. So this, the, the, this one's for taking the, the, the payment. So we'll, we'll go on, sorry, sorry, there was one more uh, area that we would, uh, I need to cover first, which is uh, returns. So occasionally customers will uh, return goods because they're they're faulty. If you have a policy within your store of of having a, a sort of seller return or a peace of mind guarantee or 14 days to return something, uh, we we can totally cater for that type of scenario as well in SAP customer checkout. And um, so there there's a few ways to do this. Obviously, the most ideal is if the customer already has their receipt. And um, so if that's the case. Uh, we can simply take the receipt, and if I just go back to uh, my receipt emulator, uh, you can see that each receipt here has been set up so that the receipt number uh, has this corresponding barcode. So you could be using your barcode scanner to simply scan in the receipt number. Um, if that wasn't possible, uh, or the customer didn't have the receipt, we can start to go and, and search for the, the receipt here. So again, like on items and on business partners, um, we have uh, the ability to go and search over many, many different things. So we can, have, you know, if we have the customer set up for a particular transaction, we can search by that. We can search up by amount. Um, we, we can search on many, many different criteria there. Or we can just actually go and browse through the list uh, and find the relevant transaction that we're looking for. Um, so for us, uh, let's say this customer here, wants to go and return uh, one of these items. So this is the one that we looked at earlier, uh, the X display and uh, the regular item that we sold. And they, they're, they're happy with the X display one, but they want to go and return uh, the regular one that they bought. So I'll simply go and click on this button here, uh, quantity to be cancelled uh, one. It's, it's only one that they bought. In fact, the maximum uh, amount that they can return here is one. 
Um, and again, like discounts where we need to go and give a, a reason why it's happening, we can capture that information when it comes to returns as well. Um, so the reason that they want to, to return this one um, is it's changed lines. In this case, again, we can we can set up whichever reasons you would like. Um, we click on OK here, uh, and we can go and uh, we can go and issue uh, a payment out to them if it's if it's a payment, or we can choose another method. So, for example, here we might want to use a voucher or a gift card, or should we want to pay them out in cash? We can we can do that. We certainly have the option to go and. Uh, do whatever method suits the business best. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Okay. So. In the case, let's say, for example, when we have uh, a gift card scenario, uh, I wouldn't really apply to this customer because we deal with them on a credit account basis. But let, let's say, for example, we have a customer who wants to return something. Uh, it's damaged, but they don't actually have their receipt. Uh, so it, it may be your, your store policy where you would say, OK, we can, we'll not give you the cash back, but we'll give you a store credit for it. Uh, and this, this is what this uh, this voucher system would do for you. Um, so you can either, if, if you have a pre-printed voucher set up that you would use, or um, you want to just note the details on the receipt and use that as the voucher system, we can we can do either or. Um, so the key thing is that uh, we need an ID number to identify this one particular voucher. <clears throat> so uh, let's let's say we. Use the number seven 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 eight 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 nine nine nine. Okay, and what this does is it will go and issue a, a gift card onto the receipt now. And um, so when when we're happy with that, just close that that return selection. Uh, and we'll click on OK this time now to finish the sale. Uh, we have this set up so that a, a particular voucher paper is used uh, in conjunction with the printer. So it's asking us to insert that special paper so that we can go and print off the, the relevant details uh, of the transaction, uh, of, the, of the voucher, the amounts, etc. Etc. that. So we'll click on OK. It says it's printing. Uh, and we'll look at the last print that was made there, certainly the, the, the receipt element, uh, and we can see all the, the information. So we could see that this, this was returned, uh, all of the discount information, uh, and so on there. And we could also see as well that the gift card was issued for this particular amount. Okay, so we'll close the cash draw uh, and, and get back in. So if the customer uh, came back to us and wanted to go and use that Voucher. That's obviously uh, something that they can they can do. But the SAP customer checkout keeps track of all of these, uh, all of the vouchers in the system, and how much of them's been used as well. Uh, it's not just a case where all of the voucher value has to be used. If we have a voucher for two hundred pounds, the customer can use fifty pounds here, hundred pounds there, and another fifty pounds, uh, and SAP customer checkout would manage. Uh, what the what their balance is on that particular voucher. Okay, so let's let's get selling one of these, and for uh, argument's sake, we'll sell this for 100, since it's less than the value of our voucher. Okay, so the customer hands over the voucher. We would, if the the voucher uh, has the ID number on it, great. We can simply type that in. Uh, if not, we can go and uh, search for for the particular voucher that we're looking. So ours was seven 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 eight 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 nine nine nine. So when we search for that, we get the results. Uh, we get the results here. So we can see the original uh, amounts uh, and the remaining amount are the same. The customer hasn't spent any of their voucher yet. So we would like to go and use this voucher now to pay for this purchase. And we can see that uh, in the payment method box here, 
the voucher has came up as the payment method. So we're, we're happy with that. We'll click on OK. Again, we'll close our cash drawer, get on to the next transaction. So when the customer now comes back and tries to purchase something else, Let's charge them the full price of 300 this time. Uh, and they want to pay with their voucher again. We'll go into the, the voucher button here. We'll search for the voucher. OK. So let's go back to here and click search. So we can see now the remaining amount, because the customer's already spent £100, the remaining amount is only 15537 So that is the maximum that they can use in this case uh, when it comes to, to using that voucher for payment. Uh, so we still have uh, a balance that the customer would need to pay. And again, they, they have the option of paying this uh, as cash. Uh, or on a card. So we're going we're gonna to have the balance paid by cash here this time. Uh, well, well, one other feature that we have is the ability to go and use these money buttons. So here I have a, a 10 uh, and, a, and a 20 and I can keep pressing these buttons to match the, the amount of cash that the customer has given me. Um, or I could just simply key it in or, um, by using these, uh, these buttons on here. So let's say the customers owe us 155. Uh, let's just keep pushing that until we get to 160. Uh, we'll press OK and finish. And we'll borrow the customer 1537 change. And we'll go and close our cash drawer again. So that, that's the cycle of using up the, the, the vouchers uh, there. Um, the, the, there's one final uh, aspect that I would like to cover uh, of SAP customer checkout, and that's the ability to park, um, or you, you may be more familiar as, as a, a layaway um, terminology when it comes to processing sales. So if you're if you're in the middle uh, of a of a sale and the customer's forgot their wallet's left out in the car, or for for whatever reason you want to go and still record the sales, still record all the items that you've had on there, but you want to go and take payment for it later, uh, we, we can do that as well. Uh, so if I choose another item uh, and hit on this park button here, that will go and park that now for, uh, for me to resume that sale later. So in order to do that, I'm simply go and look for the, the, the receipt number. Uh, this was that I've done for £225. I quickly go and select that and now I can go and take payment for it from the customer uh, on their card. Okay. And it's as simple as that. It's uh, fairly straightforward. Just close the cash drawer again and We'll get back into the customer checkout. So the, the, these are some of the sales uh, functions that we have in, in SAP customer checkout. Um, it's, it, if you're looking at this and you think, okay, great, that's that's probably 90% of, of what we need the solution to do from a sales perspective, uh, but there's another 10% that's absolutely essential to our business that it doesn't do. I would suggest in that case, come and speak to us because if you're familiar in any way with Business One, uh, you'll, you'll know that the architecture allows to have add-ons and customizations and enhancements written for the solution. Uh, SAP Customer Checkout is no different. Um, so we, we've worked with a number of our, our uh, retail customers in order to develop additional functionality. So for example, if your business uh, sells products where, let's say, some of the, some of them are age restricted, and you need to go and be checking, uh, you know, IDs or, or something like that, when um, when making sales for these, so you ideally you're looking for something to be popping up to your uh, sales advisor saying, okay, we need to check some ID, verify the age, that type of thing, uh, then that. SAP customer checkout does not do that out of the box. Okay, there are some lim limitations uh, from that perspective, but by using the additional plugin 
uh, functionality, th those are the type of enhancements that we can make. So uh, I would say if you're at the stage where you know it's it, it's ticking most of the boxes for you, but there, there's a few areas where you're not sure whether it's going to be suitable for your business or not, come and speak to us. Uh, we would like to hear from you, see what those problems are, and see if there's a way of us closing that gap for you. Okay. So um, the, there's uh, a few, just to finish off, a few more areas of SAP customer checkout that I would uh, like to look at with you. Um, and that's really around after we've processed all the uh, transactions about how we go and manage the, the money that's actually in the till. Uh, and what we do when it comes to closing and cashing up and all of those uh, those type of scenarios. Um, so again, we can control who has access to these. You may want to restrict this to, to your supervisor level, uh, perhaps your, your management level employees. Okay, but the first area that I would like to go and look at is the cash in, cash out feature. Um, so this is, let, let's say we, we get to a stage where the, um, the it's been a busy day, we'll have a lot of cash in the towel, and we'll want to go and take some of that out and put it in the safe. Okay, so we would simply select the cash out. How much would we like to take out? Uh, £300, uh, and it's, it's going in the safe. Okay. Cash drawer opens, we take the, the £300 out, and we, we're going to take it to the safe. So what SAP Customer Checkout does is not only is it synchronizing the business partners and the items and all of the prices from the ERP system. It's also managing how much cash you, you have in your drawer or what you should have in your drawer and factoring in things like cash in and cash out. Uh, so we would calculate all, all of that up when it comes to going uh, to the cash desk closing feature, which we would uh, do next. Okay, so th this is really happening at the end of the, the day or the end of the shift, uh, and you know we, we need to go and now account for how much cash we actually do have uh, in the till. Okay, so I'll click on next step here. So this this is all the cash relevant transactions that, that that's happened today from this uh, checkout. So I'm going to click on next step here. So what it's asking me to do is provide the amount of each denomination uh, that I have. Okay. Now you can see this one here is in euros. What's going to happen is it's going to ask me to provide each denomination um, of money and, and card payments, etc., etc., for all of the currencies that I have the checkout set up for. Okay. So. Uh, for euros, let's say I, I don't have very much here. I have uh, I, I've got 150, and you know I've maybe got some coins as well. Um, and so I'll just go and and of these here. Let's see, euros isn't the main currency we operate in. It's mainly sterling. So we click on next step, and now we're on to the sterling, and we'll have the relevant notes that exist and the relevant coins that exist for sterling as well. So let's let's say we have uh, a lot more of these and so on, and we, we keep going on until we had the full uh, cash that we had in our till accounted for. Um, so we'll have some credit card payments as well for £500 and, and so on until the, until the whole thing is complete. So we go into the, the next uh, screen and we would have uh, an overview of both currencies, what the actual is, and what the target was as well for, for each of these uh, payment types. Uh, and we could also look at that as well by uh, individual currency that we have set up on the system as well. Okay. So what, one, one other feature uh, that we don't have set up here uh, is the ability to, to have more than one cash drawer. Uh, so we can have one point of sale terminal, uh, and if you had a scenario where, okay, you you're happy for employees to share the point of sale because, of course, they can use their individual logins, but each employee has their own cash drawer where we can cater for that in SAP customer checkout as well. Uh, simply, we would, uh, one point of sale can control more than one drawer and we can go and close up uh, and, and 
choose which one we're closing up and go and capture the amount of cash and the denominations that we would have in each of those. Okay, so we could, when we're happy with enter that, we would go and uh, print, print off that report uh, and we could be choosing to the amount to remain. So obviously when, when you have a particular cash drawer, uh, you, you don't necessarily want to take all the cash out, you want to leave a float for the next day, so you can be choosing to, to do that here as well. Okay, uh, and the final uh, the final aspect is uh, the cashing up screen. Okay, so the cashing up screen is the the report that we would have, which would go and show um, everything that we would that, that we should have in the till. So that this could go and be printed off using the receipt printer, uh, and when it comes to going reconciling. Uh, does the cash match, match up with what we should have? This is the report that we would use. Okay, so um, I hope that's given you a, a good overview of SAP customer checkout uh, and some of the functions and features that we uh, that we have in there. Um, as I said earlier, if there's something that perhaps you require in your business that SAP customer checkout doesn't do, uh, please speak to us. We would be more than happy to hear from you. Um, and uh, just in general, if, if you would like to mo know more about SAP customer checkout, uh, please come and speak to us. We would be absolutely delighted to speak with you, uh, find out exactly what your requirements are and how we can help you uh, solve the problem, really. Okay. Um, Thank you every, everyone for watching this uh, and I hope to speak again with you soon.